Imagine being a Muslim and waking up to a headline that describes the person who's just killed 50 of your fellow Muslims as... Angelic boy who grew into an evil far-right mass killer. Angelic boy. Is that really the best descriptor for a man who just opened fire on a mosque? Is there not a more fitting adjective that you could have used? The same paper covered the Orlando nightclub shooting in 2016. This was its front page. ISIS maniac kills 50 in gay club. I want to compare the two for a minute. Same paper, similar crime, similar death toll. One starts with angelic boy, the other with ISIS maniac. One shows a picture of a father holding his child, the other a narcissistic man in all black. On one, a smaller image of the victim. On the other, a smaller image of the killer. No mention of the victims at all. Now you might be thinking, it's one newspaper, Jan. Chill. Yeah, no, I don't think I will chill. Here's the Daily Mail. How a blonde little boy turned into a far-right mass killer. The Mail wants you to know that the blonde little boy who killed dozens of people as they prayed had a father who died of cancer. I mean, that's the real tragedy here, isn't it? What's particularly egregious about this is that it appears to have been published while the situation was still unfolding. There's more. Working class madman. In Courier Mail land, white men who shoot children with semi-automatics are honestly just Aussie battlers gone a bit wrong. I mean, he was just a kid from Grafton after all. Now I'm not saying don't go into his background. Of course we want to know who he is and where he came from. But I do question whether his working class roots should be front and centre the morning after he's murdered 50 people. Why aren't there pictures on your front page? The Courier Mail rectified that 24 hours later with this cover, which appeared to give the victims the dignity they deserve. That is, until you read the first sentence. Terrorist Brenton Tarrant became twisted by a severe addiction to violent video games as he morphed from a curly-haired schoolboy into a ghastly mass murderer. In case it wasn't clear what drove the curly-haired schoolboy to become a ghastly mass murderer, the Courier Mail spells it out for you. Gunman loved violent games. Yeah, don't worry that he wrote a 73-page manifesto on how Australia must eliminate its Muslims. No, please continue telling us about the curly-haired schoolboy who played a bit too much Sega. I don't know, maybe it's weird for the Murdoch press to go hard on just how much this man despised Muslims, given they've been low-key fanning that sentiment for years. Remember this, and this, and these, and these? But what I actually think is going on here runs deeper than media bias and or culpability. See, it's easy to play the us versus them game with brown terrorists, right? They come from Arabia with their weird religion and they don't like us. But the white terrorists, they are us. We see ourselves in them. It's easy for us to say that Muslim terrorists come from an inferior culture or a violent religion, a broken society, that they are full of hate. But we can't quite say that about the white ones because to do so would be to say that we're just the same or that we've had it wrong about the brown ones the whole time. And so we look for any shred of the human, of the man within the monster, of the kid behind the killer. We give the white terrorists the privilege of a humanity that we inherently afford to whiteness. And then we try and work out how it all went wrong in ways that don't implicate us. His dad died of cancer. He played too many video games. He's a working class man. He's just a kid from Grafton. But see, none of that coats the truth that a white terrorist massacred innocent Muslims because he despised them. Now you tell me what that says about us.